Yes, now I'm recording the session. Um, you can see the PowerPoint screen, right? Yeah, I can see it. Cool. All right. So tonight we're briefly going to discuss how to get certified. Well, clearly you would have to pass the exam. Uh, that would make sense. But how to prepare yourself well so that you'll actually pass this exam and then get certified. Um, we've come a long way, actually. We've been through the first part of um, going over the exam preparation. And tonight we'll have a look at what's the right plan for you to get certified. And then next week, we'll actually look at some example questions so that you know what you might expect on the exam. And then you probably understand why you need to uh, prepare yourself so thoroughly for the uh, exam. Yes, I thought this would happen. Hold on. Transitions. Yeah, there we go. Um, so first, great if you want to get certified, but there's no use trying to get to prepare yourself without knowing the basics of Java. And the best way to do it is actually to get some hands-on experience with Java. Try to get a Java project. And if you can't find one, just do your own Java project. It's still a really good way to get acquainted with the language, know all the constructs that you might be able to use, when to use which. And you actually have something to build up on during the actual exam preparations. So you may wonder, well, I've been programming for a few, or, few years already. Does that mean that then I don't really need to prepare for the exam? And I would definitely say no. Even if you are very familiar with Java already, the exam is really something different because it's going to require you to think like the compiler. And it's also going to require you to think like you're actually running the program. So for example, you would have to know when something is a compile time error or when something is a runtime error. There's many more things you'll need to know. So what I really want you to uh, do. If you have this basic knowledge of Java already, try to get one of these study guides. And I actually have a few here. I have um, this one. I really like it. I'm not sure if you can see it well, if I'm holding it here. Um, yeah, I can see it. This yeah. one is the OCA8 um, study guides. And it's from, I'm probably going to pronounce it incorrectly, but Sean John Boyarski and Scott Selikov, and they did a really good job. As you can see, it's, well, it's, you might think it's big, but it's definitely not too bad if you've seen the other books I need to study <laughs> for computer science. And they have lots of example questions. They are really fun examples in the book, but um, it doesn't really relate that much to actual Java practice on um, the work environment. If that's what you would want, you might rather use uh, this book. Uh, it's a lot bigger, but actually it has a really big font as well. So. I, can open it you can see the font is rather big so it's not necessarily a whole lot more to do and this one is and i'm also going to pronounce it incorrectly from uh Hanuman, this book and as you can see it says um ocp 11 part one on top um i know it's about uh java 11 but actually you can skip a few sections you can skip everything on uh, modular programming it's not that bad. You can just use um, this book for Java 8 as well. You'll just know a bit too much and that's not really a problem. So also this book you could use to prepare yourself for the exam. And what I like about this book is that it gives you a bit more of actual Java knowledge you could also use uh, on the workflow. So maybe to that extent, it might be easier for beginners than the other book. Um, and then there's actually, if you still want to do the, um, the other one, the OCA study guide that just showed, they also have it in 11 edition, and this is also only a part one. And as I already said, there is no OSP 11 part one anymore. There used to be one, but still, if you just know this book from cover to cover, you also know everything you need to know for the OCA 8 exam, but just a bit too much again. But then at least you have the latest version and then you can still get certified in a basic certificate. So it could be a nice trade-off to go for the OSP 11 part one book as well. So what I would do or what I have done actually all these times, I would really just read the study guides kind of cover to cover. Well, there are some, um, in the end, there are some extra additions to the book that you might not really need to read. And in the beginning, there are some sections that you might be able to skip, but it's really, it's a lot of reading. 
and just do a chapter a night, make it cozy, get on the couch with your blanket and your book, and you could just read it. That's how I did it. And then uh, I realized I actually had to read it twice to be prepared well. So um, what I did, I read the study guide, then I did a mock exam. And there's plenty of mock exams out there. I will show you some that I could really recommend. This one is Antiware, and they have all these mock exams for Java over here. You could use uh, this one for the uh, OCA8 exam. And it's really good, actually. They also have some theory explanations under the questions so you can see um, which one is working or not. And then there's also this one. I know some of my um, clients are using it. I haven't used it yet myself, but they say it's really good as well. Um, so you read the book once, then you go to this mock exam tool, you take a mock exam, and then you feel like, hmm, I might need to read this book again, or I might need to read part of these books again. And then that's what you're going to do. And then you're going to take mock exams again. And you're just going to do this until you pass the exam. And if you've seen the mock exams, you really know what you can expect on the real exam. Because it's, as I already said, it's nothing like your Java day job. It's really a different um, mindset you need to have to pass the exams. And I really like this because it's, I just see this little game. You know, it's like playing chess. You need to think to beat the uh, competitor. In this case, the competitor is the Oracle examinator who's asking you questions. And you're just going to beat him by answering all the questions right. That's kind of the game, right? Uh, so if you see like a game, it might actually be more fun. I don't know, but that's what I do to get prepared. And I, uh, yeah, well, I've done five exams for Oracle and I've passed all of them. The one I did, most poorly on was this one, the OSP 11 part one. It was my worst exam, but also I kind of underestimated it because I figured, ah, I don't have time to all the three hours this morning, but I want to see it. So I'll just do it. And then I only just passed it. So yeah, <laughs> but the other ones, if you just do the preparations properly, I'm really sure you can pass them too. Any questions? No? Any comments on the uh, Oracle exams on your experience? No, oh, I'm getting something in the chat, I think. Let me see if I can find the chats. Ah, you filled the program in one. Well, that's not too bad. It was really hard. It was way harder than OCA 8. So maybe we should just go for OCA 8 because that was actually a lot easier than part uh, Java 11.1. So for anyone who doesn't know, it used to be um, OCA8 and then OCP8, and then OCP8 would be the higher um, certificate. And then for 11, they said, now nah, we're going to do this differently. We're going to have only OCP11, but you need to pass two exams. So you wouldn't already have this sort of coin of OCA certified if you pass the first exam. You wouldn't really have anything after the passing the first exam, because you would also have to pass the second exam before you would have the title of Oracle certified programmer. So, and then like after a year of releasing these exams, they decided to merge the exam into one, well, actually it's not bigger, it's smaller, it says less questions, but one exam covering more topics. So there is no sort of easy exam to get started anymore, except for OCA8 that's still live. So if you want to get the um, beginner certificate, it's best to just go for OCA8 right now. Are you typing something in the chat still, Leon? You're going for 11. Ah, so then you actually need the other part of this book as well, because this is only just a tiny one. There is a bigger part. I think the real book, it has, it has so many pages. I don't even know. It's crazy. 1,200 pages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be nice. It's going to be a good read under the Christmas tree. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right, that's it for me right now. I'm going to post some um, links in the comments so that you know where to get the book and which, uh, what book I'm actually talking about here. And then next week, we'll see a few questions just to get some sort of feeling of what kind of questions you can expect to be on the exam. And I'll also show you how you can actually schedule the exam because you might think this shouldn't be too hard. It can actually be quite hard. It took me an hour yesterday, I think, with a group of students to get everybody set up for the exam and one didn't even manage to do so because 
funky stuff with Oracle accounts. So I'll also show you how to actually um, so, uh, um, schedule the exam because it's not as straightforward as it actually kind of should be. All right, have a lovely Saturday evening. And I hope to see you again next week and then we'll see some mock questions and that's definitely going to be a lot of fun.